Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale or finale of Miss Marvel. A great finale, season finale, whatever it ends up being. A uh, lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So immediately, we kind of pick up with Cameron and Bruno on the run. And I do love, like, love, but... In the sense of love, I mean that sarcastically of like, oh man, like how uh, uh, Devers, the um, the agent in particular, were following uh, from uh, damage control. It's kind of painting the narrative like, oh, they're causing all this destruction. I even love she was like, uh, uh, she made some remark and the guy was like, Pe these people? And she's like, kids. Almost being like, don't make this a race thing. I'm talking about kids specifically. I'm like... The fact is, he even had even he had to clarify. It's like because she's saying like how dangerous those are. They're causing so much destruction. I'm like, your drone did that. Like Cameron's not even the one that did that. I mean, to our like, even Bruno later on says like, yeah, they blew up my apartment. It's like, yeah, they did that. I love that. It's like, I mean, yeah, the, the derailing the train kind of was on Cameron, but it's like they're causing just as much destruction. To I mean, we maybe we just didn't see everything, but they were kind of pinning it all on Cameron. But it's like you were just at fault here too. But it's like nah, like she's an over zealous person like yeah my job is to capture powered individuals and she didn't handle this a very tactful way i mean since the very beginning they've showcased that she's like super aggro about this situation about when she was going after kamala like earlier in the season so but um at the same time they're on the run kamala you know is trying to like break the news to her family and i love um her brother being like oh my god i had no idea i'm so shocked it's like you told everybody, didn't she's like, her mom's like, no, 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 I told your dad, and it's like, yeah, but, and then her brother's like, yeah, but dad, you know, uh, also, like, you know, of course, like, mom's gonna tell dad, but dad had it on speaker, so I overheard, which, her sister-in-law's like, oh my god, this is so cool, this is so dope, like, are your powers limitless, do you have to recharge her, I'm like, those are really, really good questions, and her brother was like, yeah, like, did you mean to drop that kid when you saved him, I was like, that's such a, I mean, that's a brotherly thing to do, but I'm like, a sibling thing to do, but that's such a dick thing, you found out I'm a superhero, and I have powers, and the first thing you do is talk about the one time I kind of failed, like, thanks, bro, like, that fail had a lot of shame in my heart, and now you're just kind of throwing it back in my face, but gets in contact from Nakia about, like, right, uh, well, afterwards, because, like, well, that was after the fact, because I really like, I think it's such a dope thing that her family now knows, that, I think that's so cool, like, her tight-knit circle now knows, everyone knows, you know, about her powers and everything, which I think is pretty dope, I mean, granted, she still has a secret identity thing, like, amongst her community and just the world in general, but I think it is so nice that, uh, when it's all said and done, that she, uh, that her family knows, and her dad's kind of worried, he's like, you know, it's like, right, like, I'm so proud of you, but I should be worried about you finding trouble, it's like, but dad, you raised me to, like, when you, when I see something wrong, try to make it right, you know, when I see trouble, like, to try and help people, so, and obviously she finds out about Bruno, and she wants to go looking for him, but before she can go, her mom gives her a gift, which, once again, I love that, because it's very, um, I thought that was super sweet, just knowing that, like, your her family plays such a big role in shaping her superhero identity. I mean, just in what they instilled in her as a person, but also just the fact is her mom gave her the suit I thought was pretty dope. Because I, I figured, I thought she'd make it herself, so I don't know. Because I'm a, with the symbol and everything, it has to be, like, her mom, like, had that custom made before they came back home. Um, which I thought was so dope. Um, I'm assuming it was maybe either she made it herself or she it had to be custom made she maybe took it to someone to make it or she made it herself uh, but I'm like I said like obviously because of the the symbol in it and everything but it's like that's super dope that it kind of makes me think of uh, Superman and Lois and it's like oh nice costume thanks my mom made it for me it's just like, it's kind of that endearing feeling suited up ready to go. I do like because, well, I'm sure in the comics she uses her, I think, because I, I know they do it a little bit in the Avengers video game, like the little bit I've ever seen of it. I haven't ever played it myself, but I know that's how she kind of probably typically probably like gets around, like where Peter has his web swinging, she has her like stretching. I wonder are they typically close in age in the comics, because that's what I was wondering, because obviously like I grew up with Spider-Man, like I watched a lot of Spider-Man cartoons growing up, Spider-Man's like my favorite hero, so I feel bad for always making that comparison, but I think other people typically do that too, like it's not a one-for-one, one, but there is a similar thing of like, she is kind of like 
the the next generation, the, the younger generation Spider Man, you know, because obviously Spider Man's been around like forever and ever, and obviously even young, but it's just like she's a newer age Spider Man. Like they have a, a lot of the same like quirky qualities and stuff like that. Uh, but I wonder, typically in the comics, are they close enough in age? Because I mean, I mean, obviously, like her, just in real life, her and Tom Holland are a couple years apart in age. But also, even in the confines of the MCU, like we know she's in high school, but we don't. I don't. Mm, I'm assuming they're borderline seniors too, maybe. I don't actually know what grade they're in because we know, like, obviously, that's the whole point of Far uh, No Way Home. Is like, yeah, they're getting ready for college, so. They're, so they're probably not that far apart in age, at least in the show. Because I know sometimes, because I know at least in the Ultimate comics, Peter was like 16 when he, when he died. So I don't know if they're always typically around the same age. Because I know sometimes Peter's stories take him to his college years and adulthood and stuff like that. So that's what I'm just wondering. So, But obviously, in the com at least in this universe, they're implying, like, obviously, they're like super close in age. So either way. And that was just something I was kind of wondering. Because obviously, the, like I said, the, the Spider-Man and Miss Marvel comparison. But, um... I thought it was obviously beautiful, like, obviously they were tr at first trying to hide out in the mosque, but it's like, no, you can't do that, like, obviously this place is already under surveillance, so they're going to find you here, and that's going to, you know, cause some issues, so go to the school, it's Saturday, no one's there, or they hid out for a little bit, and obviously Devers came in being like, alright, I need, I everyone's like, ready, yep, ID's here, they're looking for a 16 to 25 year old, like, that could be any of us. I was like, oh, do you want some cookies? And a secret ingredient is nutmeg. It's like, I don't think she likes the cookies. She don't like, she likes my cookies. And it's like, and I love that uh, she, uh, he made a, uh, a, uh, the sheik made a, uh, he quoted something. She's like, oh, I don't want to like, uh, and I don't need, have time for your uh, quotes from the Quran or whatever. He's like, actually, that's from Abraham Lincoln. I'm like, yeah. It's like, kind of messed up. Yeah, I, I love that because it's like, because there's almost that, I, I like that subtlety and just being like, oh, like, you just assumed something. Like, you keep, all you keep doing is making assumptions. And it's like, yeah. And she had this little smirk on her face, like, annoyed smirk when he when he was like, actually, that was a quote from Abraham Lincoln. Um, and it's like, when Naki was trying to keep uh, them out of that room, and then it's like, hey. And she's like, yeah, I don't want anyone to know that this is my boyfriend. And he's like, wait, you heard that? Do you Are you wearing a body camera? Because I need footage of this. She just said that I'm her boyfriend. It's just like, I was like, that's super cute. Um, but I also love, like, when he gave Bruno and Cameron disguises, all he did was put on a hat. And it's just like, okay. And they meet up with uh, Kamala, and it's like, she's like, what are you wearing? And they're like, what are you wearing? So, meet up with Nakia at the high school, and... Um, Obviously, it's like, okay, so we got to get, well, she called uh, Kareem, who's going to help with Cameron, just got to get him to the docks by midnight, and I, I love that they are able to kind of take a second to really, like, talk for a second, it's like, right, I tell you everything, Kamala, but you don't tell me anything, she's like, Nakia, like, you know, it's like, well, you hate superheroes, so I didn't know, I didn't want you to, like, to end up hating me, she's like, Kamala, I can never, I know, I know, and she's like, I really messed up, I'm sorry, which I thought was interesting, because I know, like, Nakia's issues with Kamala, because of, like, what that did to, the negative attention, their community already has so much negative attention, that it's like, Kamala doing what she's doing, she's going to go and draw more, but the way Kamala put it, almost sound like, she kind of doesn't like superheroes all across the board, I thought it was more just like a Kamala situation, Situation, I didn't realize it was like maybe all across the board, but it might be because she's come kind of, She might be one of those people who just really like looks at superheroes like I understand how cool and great they are But the damage and problems that they cause for other people to kind of have to clean up She might be she might have that kind of perspective on things She, she is that type of person that is very like level-headed in that regard that I could could say like, Kamala's a com complete and utter fangirl So like that's like the difference and I think Nakia might not like she might have like not the rose tinted glasses that Kamala does, so maybe that's kind of what that was. I I just thought that that specific phrasing of like uh, you hate superheroes, you know that like like I said, I just assumed it was a Kamala thing, but it's like no, it'd be interesting if it was like a oh she, not that she hates them, but she has her issues with superheroes. I'm like oh that's interesting, but um right they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. Uh, the plate like the uh, obviously. Uh, 
Devers was told to back down because like, oh, this is bad publicity for damage control. Uh, but she didn't listen because it's like, for her, I guess it's like, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do my job. I'm about taking down uh, powered individuals. They're dangerous. It's like, you're causing all, you legitimately cause more property damage in this than like, um, because I, those weapons are set to non-lethal, but they were blowing, like, chunks out of walls and stuff. I mean, especially at one point, one of them was riding a bike, and the the weapons fire, and it cracked the wall. I'm like, if that hit one of them, like, that's going to be pretty impactful. And, and especially the way they handled the kids, they were just, like, slamming them to the ground. It's like, holy, wow. That's why I was like, they kind of went, not kind of, they super went harder in the paint. That was a super... Super regret because like they'll justify at least Devers is justifying like right this was a necessary action but it's like the response didn't um the situation didn't require such a heavy handed response but she also knew like but I guess in her head it's like right if I do this I get the uh, powered individuals it's all good I'm a I'm a come out looking like the hero like I'm a, you know but it's still like they're going kind of look crappy so. Either way, they're coming up with their plans on what to do, and Zoe's there too. It's like, wait, why are you here? It's like, I used to school to film the lighting to film my TikToks. It's like, okay, don't worry, Kamala, we're all here for you. And I guess Zoe is too. And it's like, yay! And then, like, they're coming up with their plan. Partway through, um, Amir shows up and it's like, what are you doing? It's like, mom told me to look after you. It's like, how'd you get in here? Through the bathroom window. Like, I went to this school too, you guys. And it's like, and she's like, oh, superheroes don't need, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, chaperones. I would love that. That's super cute. It's like, you're still my sister, so of course I'm going to have to look after you. And so they're coming up with their plan, and I love chalking, like, making it out on a chalkboard. Um, and I really like this conversation between Nakia and Zoe, where it's like, wait, so you knew the entire time Kamala had powers, and you didn't say anything. She's like, that's not like you. Because, I mean, what did Zoe do after AvengerCon? She immediately was like, oh my god, like, um... Uh, I guess that's why she came up with the name immediately, not just for like, like she was also, cause she, cause she's almost, she's like, yeah, I might be this popular person, but I'm not that much of a dick that I wouldn't recognize that it was Kamala. It's like, I think that's kind of interesting. And it's like, right, Kamala saved my life. So she didn't tell the world and she didn't tell, um, any of the, um, agents from damage control because it's like, right, she saved my life. Like Kamala should be able to like, like, come out to the world when she wants to, and I, and I think Nakia really appreciated, because it's like, oh, like, because I think for her, she almost looked at it, almost like, oh, like, there is actually a lot more substance to you, Zoe, that, you know, it's like, right, you, you, you could have, because she's the social media person, she has such a large following, that it could have been that, but she, it, it wasn't, you know, and I, I just thought that was so, that was actually really dope, and obviously, they, I figured, like, her, her following would be, a uh, big part of that, because they're like, oh yeah, like, the main part of her plan is Zoe, and she ends up using her following, and she gets the word out there, and spreads around, and the entire community comes together, because they're here like, oh my god, like, everything going down at the high school, and I love, like, the Home Alone style shenanigans, um, because I think they purposely did this, where it's like, they're like, hey, it's a bomb, and everyone runs, and it's just, like, music associated with a, a disco ball that comes down. I think that's kind of, like, flipping everyone's expectations on their heads a little bit, because you're just, like, you're going to assume the worst. And even then, it's like, they, once again, Home Alone-style traps, too, where it's like, uh, what was it, uh, when they mixed the chemicals together, and it was almost, it was it reminded me of um episode, what was it, uh, seven of What If? release the foam it kind of reminded me of that a little bit um the party tour episode but um yeah like they went the super non-lethal route the worst they did was like what tall uh baseballs at people that's about it obviously cameron's still in that position where he can't fully control his powers and even to the point he starts like because i love that line from uh the sheep being like just because someone's your enemy, don't treat them like yours, you know? And so, it's, it's in, you know, so I thought that was kind of a nice line, and obviously Cameron couldn't really, you know, obviously his power's kind of going out of control, everything going on, finding out, like, you know, I need my mom, wait, you're working with the Red Daggers, they've been hunting, um clandestine like us for decades like why would you do that like you really think you're gonna help me he's like i need my mom and knowing something's all plus his powers just being in the state they're in like he tries to attack one of the um one of the officers and kamala ends up protecting him because it's like right we're not trying to hurt people we're not trying to kill anyone um 
But it's just like, I think in that moment, he's just pissed. He's just angry, especially when he finds out about his mom. It's like, right, she wanted to, like, get us home. Like, this place isn't my home. Like, yes, he was raised here, but for him, it's like, there's this wonderful home I had. Like, I mean, his main attachment to that place is and probably everything his mom and the other clandestines ever told him. It's like, that, that's my family, and that's my mom, and if she wants to go home and say that this isn't my home, he's probably been raised his entire life being like, yeah, this place is just temporary. It's not your actual home. So, I also really love the Amir and uh, Cameron thing of like, oh, so you're not Cousin Cameron, huh? What were you doing with my sister? Driving lessons? Do you even like British Bake Off? It's like, okay, like, my sister's pretty smart and got a good head on her shoulder. So if she says that you're someone worth protecting, then I'll help. that's the main reason why I'm here to help you. So, but I love them. Like I said, just hijinks wise, like everyone helping. Uh, once again, they kind of got a rough end the especially Bruno when he's like, come on, you guys, like, I know you like these dance moves, and then they just, like, slam them against gossip, like, Jesus, and then Zoe, Nakia, and Amir, like, they end up, like, slamming them, like I said, slamming them to the ground, super aggressive, but, uh, when the time comes out, like, you know, the entire community's gathered outside, everyone's, like, recording to capture all of this, and in that moment, like, Cameron is, like, they're, they legitimately open fire on him. It's like, you could have killed him if, if Kamala hadn't stepped in. And then he used a weapon to blast away her powers. And then she kind of fully utilizes her abigening power, which I think is kind of neat. Because now it's like fully um, representative of kind of, you know, obviously it t it's taking on a different form with like the... Um, constructability of it but it's still very much like her powers especially like she embiggens like her legs and her hands and even her referring to it as an embiggening i'm like yeah so that's pretty dope and i love her ask hey you guys in there okay they're like yes ma'am yes night like she's like not that name it's like once again it's just like how cute she is as a hero um and Cameron kind of coming more into his power. His powers, and maybe that's just because he's not holding back like she is, but his powers in certain instances seem like it was a lot more destructive than hers, but I think they're parallel to each other. I mean, it's all, I think, Nor, and I think it's just that he was just kind of not holding back like she was. Plus, he has, like, a lot more training when it comes to fighting, too, so, like, he was actually, so I think it made it a little easier for his, him to kind of, like, quickly adjust to his powers. Um, plus, once again, everything he's feeling right now. But obviously it gets to the point, like, he releases his powers. He can barely, like, contain it. Because, like, like I said, I think everything, you know, you're finding out that your mom is gone, that she died. It's just, it's too much. And I love that moment where Kamala closes in and just, like, creates, like, a, like, spear around them. And he's just kind of like, what am I going to do? Like, this isn't my home. But it's like, it is. Your mom sacrificed, she gave what she had to you so that you could be per you be perfectly okay in this world you know he's like oh, I i'm not going to be normal anymore and it's like because it's like how can i even be in this world when i'm not normal and she's like there is no normal the fact is what we have all we can do is do the best with what we've been given you know and she got him out of there and obviously when they were closing in on kamala the entire community including her parents surrounded her and even the local cops got in the way being like, yo, like, this kid saving the day, like, because uh, they clearly saw, like, she wasn't, like, she only fought back after you guys did. She was in on complete defense, and then you guys forced her into offense. So, luckily, Kamala was, once again, I, I like, once again, like, makes traveling around really easy. I didn't talk, I really love even, like, the, the it's like, you're you're above the street lights, but she still adheres to it. It's like, hey, I mean, I guess it kind of plays with the fact that she still doesn't have her license, so I think that's kind of cute. That's like, all right, they're like, okay, green light, all right, time to go. You know, so it makes getting around the city really easy, like, so I thought that was kind of uh, neat, you know, kind of go through the rooftops. Like I said, I think her beginning is kind of how she gets around in the comics, just stretching, like, her arms and her legs. That's kind of... Um, how that kind of goes, but either way, when it's all said and done, you kind of save the day. Uh, still trying to figure out the name situation. I love her brothers like hyping up. He's like, yeah, like I spun around and we threw like all these, like we put the balls in, the baseballs in, the softballs in the machine and just, he, you know, he's like, it's probably like the most exciting thing that's happened to them. And so I love to sit down with her dad and he kind of talks about, um, Obviously, this is an adjustment for all of them, and it's like he's like our daughter. Who do you have? What 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 are we calling you? She's like I have. I'm still figuring it out. He's like we're figuring it out as well. And he talks. He's like, do you know what Kamala means? It means 
um, perfect. But he's like, in Urdu, it's a little different. He's like, Wonder, Marvel, and she's like, oh my god, I have the same name. I've always had the same freaking name as Carol Danvers. And he's like, I have no idea who that is. And it's like, but it's like, yeah, you will always be our Miss Marvel. And I love that, that it's just like, I wonder, if, you know, because I don't know if that's necessarily where that comes from in the comics. Um necessarily, but I do like that. Because I'm sure, like, Mar Wonder and Marvel are, like, kind of that, like, probably, like, super rough translation from Urdu, but still, I love that. It's like, oh, Miss and knowing that your name also comes from your family, too, like, I, I love that. Like, that it, it isn't just something she, I mean, it kind of comes from her, but it also came from her parents. Especially them telling the story, because she is their little, their, their little Marvel, because they had said that they'd almost given up hope on having a second child. Because I was about to say, because you do see, like, it does seem like there is a bigger age gap between her and her brother, but maybe it's not as big as I think it is. But it's like, yeah, it's because uh, they didn't think it were going to happen, and she was kind of like their miracle. So she was, you know, a special case. So I thought that was beautiful. And her kind of doing her thing and just kind of, hey, New Jersey's on superhero. And I love, like, everyone at social media had posted, you know, Zoe and Nakia and um, Nakia's boyfriend being like, yeah, Nakia, uh, Nakia, I'm totally like her boyfriend. Like, I love that that's what he's focusing on. And then everyone else is um, the chic tearing himself into a hot dog. He's like, oh, I hope this is Hala. He's like, ha ha, and laughing about it. I'm like, I, lo I love how, and Rudy being like, oh, like, people are asking me, do I know who she is? Like, if I knew who she was, would I be telling you up here? But also saying, it's going to be pretty difficult for her to find a husband. I'm like, I love it. I love it so much. How much fun everyone was having with that social media wise. So, but a week later, obviously, Bruno is going to Caltech. Uh, Devers, we ended up finding, she ended up getting relieved of her duty because it's like, yeah, this doesn't look good for us from a publicity standpoint. So, yeah, you, you kind of put a bad streak on our name. So, what happens going forward with that, you know, with damage control, whether we see Devers going forward or not, she just power up. I think you just chalk that up to like, yeah, someone in that position just power tripping. Like, I don't think you need something like, oh, she's just eating. It's like, no, she's a power tripping douche. I think that's all you kind of really need to take from that. That's all I think it's really necessary on that front. But when it's all said and done, um, it does seem like Bruno is going off the Caltech, which is sad. Like Cameron and um, Kamala did almost have this moment and Bruno kind of walked in. It's kind of sad because, well, we know that. I'm curious to see what ends up happening there because like Bruno likes her, but she doesn't know that. So what ended up happening on that front? I love that he's got Cameron's car too. It's like, oh, yeah, Cameron left it to me. You know what I mean? You know, it's like, no, he didn't. Yeah, he did. No, when would he have done that? It's like, after the explosion, like, we actually got pretty close after the explosion. So he left his car to me. He's like, no, he didn't. Yes, he did. I love that. Um, but then Bruno's like, yeah, I, I studied your DNA more. And it's like, yeah, your brother was kind of wondering whether or not he could end up having powers too because you do. But he's like, we understand how the Nor works and how your powers work and how you're able to draw it out and stuff. But he's like, looking in your DNA, there's something a little different. It's almost like a mutation, which I was like, Wait, are they are they doing that? And they get to kind of leave it at that. She's like, eh, it's just another label, so not nothing to work to worry about. Because it's like, right, nor clandestine, um, Jin, and now like, oh, there might be a mutation. I might be a mutant, you know. But I'm like, because I I always wondered. I was like, you know, a while like videos in the past. I was like, when it was announced they were doing a Miss Marvel show, I'm like, well, there are no Inhumans in this universe because I, you know, because. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was never, like, canonical, canonical. That's Either they're going to soft reboot that in this universe, which I highly doubt it. I think it's going to be like, no, that's on a completely different Earth. I, I, I think that's what they're more so going to do, uh, that um, it took place on a completely different Earth. But, you know, multiverse and everything, right? But, um... I was I was always wondering like were they gonna make her the first inhuman? Not saying like she's the official first first inhuman, but that in this universe she's the first inhuman we get to know. But maybe the inhumans have always been here; they've just been in the shadows. Or has anyone been to the moon in this universe? I'm trying to think. Well, because I mean, because obviously this is also happening post, you know, well, canonically speaking. I think it is post Doctor Strange canonically, but either way, like after seeing uh, Black Bolt in once again, that was eight 
Earth 838, but still, like, you're introducing King of the Inhumans. So, you know, they are probably slowly implementing that. So I'm wondering if that, like, their jump off point are like, ah, or maybe they're going to imply that's something else. But Kamala saying isn't just being clandestine. There is something else there in her DNA. It's a mutation. And I think it's like, so I was like, are we tiptoeing towards some Terrigen stuff? Because I guess maybe instead of going through the Terrigen aspect of it, maybe it's kind of implying that there's, um... I don't, like, yeah, because I think even the inhuman stuff is still considered mutations. I don't, obviously, when you, I think mutation, you immediately think X-Men mutants, but I would assume, like, knowing she's an inhuman in the comics makes me go, like, it feels like this probably an inhuman thing. But I, I wonder, did, like, her nor powers kind of act as a, as, as a catalyst like the Terrigen did? I wonder, like, to some extent. I mean, the Terrigen crystals kind of, I mean... I don't know if they look like that in the comics, like anything Terrigen related, but her powers manifest themselves as kind of like some Terrigen type stuff, at least from like what I remember the Terrigen crystals from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. They kind of were, I mean, because her powers are kind of like crystal-like, so I'm wondering if there's something to that. Either way, I thought that was kind of like a nice little addition like that, but uh, kind of putting that off, you know, aside for now. I do like that in... I mean, yeah, there were some bigger parts to it. Yeah, it would a little international, but, you know, this was still a very small story, you know? Um, it wasn't like there was necessarily, like, a big, big bad. It's just, like, different people having their different agenda. Like, there was no, like, I guess the clandestine could be seen as villains, but it's like, even then, it's just kind of like, yeah, this is still a very small start to Kamala's story and I'm curious how people are going to feel because it seems like with that post credits that uh, Kamala went from like uh, neighborhood hero to maybe big time in an instant because I know for some people it was kind of like Spider-Man had that huge trajectory as well because you went from Civil War to Homecoming to Infinity War and Endgame then Far From Home and then obviously like no way but you, you get what I'm saying like it start. You don't did have too much time being a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Now he kind of is because the movies kind of inadvertently ended up being like a um, origin story trilogy. So, but that ending I thought was so interesting. The bingo start glowing because I was like, I went, I was like, that's what I was thinking. I was like, are we going to get like a Carol Danvers like pop in? And we sure as hell do. And then like the bingo kind of did something, and then like there was like a warp, and then Carol stands up. You're like, what? And she's looking at her hand. She's like. And she's looking around at the posters and stuff. She's like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, did her and Kamala... Because at first I was almost like, wait, did Kamala turn into her? Because I know that's a thing from the comics, apparently. Like, So so I'd heard this from someone like Kamala was kind of like almost like high or something. Like she was almost, she was kind of tripping. And her power, she made herself... She started calling herself Miss Marvel because she actually thought she was Carol Danvers. It was my understanding. So at first I was like, wait, did they switch spots? But then you look at her hand, I don't... I could be mistaken. I don't think she had the bangle, so I think her and Carol literally switched spots. Well, I'm like, is that the first time we've seen that particular outfit of Carol's? Because I'm trying to remember, like, because she's still wearing the more traditional, like, the outfit she has in Captain Marvel, which it has been a while. I need to, I still need to take time out to continue my MCU rewatch, because I haven't, I've only seen Captain Marvel the once in theaters when it originally came out, and same thing for Endgame. I want to say that's the same suit then and there, even at the end, you know, um, and I'm trying to remember with Shang-Chi whether, we, I mean, we didn't really, I don't think we got a really good look at it, but I think this is like a newer suit, isn't it? Um, either way, and just like, oh, so, but that's also the question, like, if her and Carol switch places, where was Carol at when they potentially switched places, and why did that happen? Like, there's still so much they don't know about that bangle. It, it's not just about piercing the veil. Like, I guess they're just, like, dimension... Obviously, it's used for interdimensional travel. So, like, I guess wherever Carol was, hopefully she wasn't off in space in the middle of doing something important, really, really important for her and Kamala to switch places. And, like, I wonder the next time will we pick up with Carol being, like, sneaking down Kamala's stairs or something like that. And they'd be like, whoa, 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 lady, who are you? And it's like, where am I? It's like, you're in New Jersey. What? Like, was she already somewhere on Earth? Like, so many questions. Because we get our little tag at the end. Miss Marvel will return in the Marvels. So at the time of me recording, it's obviously Disney hasn't said anything official yet. Whether or not the show is going to get a second season. It, once again, it seems like most of these shows are going to be like one-offs. This one in particular. Because it's like, yeah, this is supposed to be a starting off point. Because obviously immediately after we're, 
once again, like I said, she, she's going to pop up in the Marvels. But the question then becomes like, well, beyond that, like, will there still be a season two in the future? Maybe, maybe not. Um, this is just kind of like get your small like jump off point introduction to her character. Now she's off to uh, probably uh, big things. We'll see. I I'd be really interested to see like if they do a situation of like, yeah, she kind of goes out there, does a big thing, but obviously comes back home in a season two. Would they keep her street level? Probably not. Probably like get her in a mix of everything, you know, it's a Young Avengers type of stuff going forward. So. I'm excited to see what ends up happening. Like I, I would, I'm, I'm very excited to get some interactions between her, Carol, and Monica, and they're all kind of new to this because you also got to balance. Because Kamala's going to be coming in the middle of like, of like, oh my god, I'm so, oh, that's going to be interesting because Kamala like loves Carol. Like, oh my god, Miss Marvel, I mean uh, Captain Marvel, Carol, this is so awesome. Once again, we have not dived into it. But I will. I still. It still sticks with me that scene from Wandavision. Monica has beef with Carol. Uh, the justification seems like it's because she wasn't there when Maria was sick or died. Like she was too busy all being a superhero. It's like no, this person was like your best friend, and you're your aunt Carol to me, and you weren't there when I needed you or when my mom needed you. That's kind of been the thought process. But cause we've not still yet to get an answer on that. It's just that when Jimmy and um. Darcy reference Carol going toe to toe with Thanos. She almost like had this look on her face, like, yeah, like this isn't about her. We can we can stop the conversation there. Like she was kind of annoyed. So that's going to be and really interested in that dynamic because like whatever their beef is, they're gonna to have to work through that. So while like Kamala's fangirling, like, and that's probably gonna rub Monica more potentially so that interaction is definitely going to be interesting amongst that trio so and even just what the story is going to be because i don't i don't i know that's next year but i don't know if that's going to be i don't i would assume that's going to be after secret invasion because i don't because a lot of the, the disney plus shows also haven't been labeled like she calls the only other thing we know like obviously that's august what's that august 10th i believe like that's the only one we have its rough date have it not rough day, but it's official date. I think everything else is still hasn't really been pinned down officially. So either way, I'm very, very excited uh, to see uh, continue seeing Kamala in the future. I think this is a nice introduction to a character. Like I said, I know the smallest bit about, but I thought the show was just so much fun and so sweet and endearing. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I'm also excited to see, like, you know, in what capacity we see other characters. Like, because the last time we see Cameron, he's with. Um, He's with Kareem, so it's like how that dynamic plays out. Once again, anything between him and Kamala, or will it be more of her and Bruno? Like, how will that dynamic, all of that kind of play out going forward? It's definitely going to be interesting to see. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.